I'm too busy and I'm trying to spin all this wool in this room and it's a lot of wool. <sighs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. We're in my studio today and a few months back I made a gradient bat with a hand dyed braid. I feel like we, a lot of us have a braid in our stash that we would like to turn into a gradient because we like the colors and whatever. And so I did it um, here and I spun it. And here's the yarn. You can see the gradient better, I should say, if I actually open it up. So you can actually see it go through the levels of color. Um, but I did that on a drum carter and I mentioned at the time that you could do this without a drum carter. And there are uh, quite a few people who were like, okay, please show us how. I wanted to do this earlier, but I just really didn't get to it. I don't know what to tell you. I usually have five videos going kind of in the process at once. I also moved into my dyeing space. It's just, it has been a little busy, but we finally got here <laughs> and I'm gonna do it today. I wanted to pick a braid to use. I was looking at this one and I think I'm gonna go for it. It's very fall, it's October now, spooky season. So, and also I feel like when I, oh, I was thinking I felted this slightly while I cooked it, but I really didn't. I thought it was a little felted, it's not. But what I'm gonna do is the same thing in the beginning as I did with the rose gold that faded through the grays and went to almost black. And I'm going to break the braid up into like, I'm gonna try for five different colors, but we'll see how it goes. If I end up, I don't know. I mean, I could go with four, I could go with six, but I'm gonna try with five, I'll decide. Then if I wanna mix some for transitions or what. But anyway, you'll get to see better down on the table. If I could explain what I'm doing, but if I show you, it'll be better. So let's just point you down to the table. Basically, I'm just gonna go through this and pull it apart and then we'll sort it. Because this quarry deal is like thicker, sometimes I'll have to spread it out to pull it apart. It's just not really meant to be pulled apart at this. This is like the really dark color and then some of this purple that broke, which I love. This is really dark. This is really dark with red. More red, orange and red. Actually, I'm gonna switch these two. Because I just switched these two because this one is like mostly red, a little bit orange. This one is mostly orange, a little bit red. So I switched those, then it's orange and then a shade of mostly just gold. So I just kind of went through and sorted them the way I want them. I think I'm going to switch these and put the darkest on the end. I am going to. I'm going to switch these two. But you know, that's part of the process. And don't worry if your color changes seem too abrupt as we're carding because I will show you how to transition really any color to any color. If I was doing this on the drum carter, what I would do is kind of visually break the drum carter into sections and then I let them overlap. I'm gonna take the whole first color, 
which is these got like shoved off the table so hang on I'm not sure well okay so this is perfect actually and I'm gonna take the actually the first two colors this these two really could have gone in either of the first two bunches or the darkest bunches okay so I'm actually gonna use these for part of the transition because they really could have gone either way. So all these are quite dark. This one kinda is like those, okay? All of these are quite dark and they've got a lot of red. I'm basically gonna blend them and I'm gonna pick one. Um, the lightest one. Okay, this is the lightest. And I actually broke it into three pieces, okay? Pretty equal, they don't need to be perfect. So I'm gonna blend these on my hand cards. Actually, let me move the rest of these over so that we don't get confused. Okay, so they're clean. And I'm gonna see what I can put on here. And I'm gonna start with the very darkest one. Okay. Gosh, these, this has long fiber. And I'm just gonna embed some of this in the teeth. And I'm going to take the next one that's also very dark and put some of the, this in. Gosh. Okay. When you blend this, you've seen me blend on hand cards before. I mean, it's pretty, you know, easy to do. Actually, I'm going to leave this off. Okay, so. Oh, my word. So when I, normally what I would do if I was trying to organize something for spinning is I would hold this by the handle. But I want to um hold those down because i have a little bit more fiber than i normally would on my cards for blending okay so now it's all in there okay see how that blended already and it blended already here too and i'm I'm okay with this level, but if you want it to have less color changes, you can just do it back and forth until you're really happy with it. So like I would take this one and swap it. And the way you do that is the paddle end, the knot handle end, you put it down against your, um, your other card at the handle end, hold it, and if you just turn your card over, and kind of hold those ends, it'll come off clean. See that? So then, if I were going to do it again, I am gonna do it again, just so you can see. So, to do it again. Okay. Okay, I'm really good with that. Really good, I love it. See that, it's nicely blended on both. Now, you can do a lot of things to take it off. I am gonna go ahead and take this off the same way. I'll show you, okay. And then I'm gonna flip this and do the same thing this way, okay. So I've taken it off both. It's just sitting on this one, really. And I'm gonna wind it up from the side I have no idea what you would call this, but I think of it as a troll tuft because it looks like the troll hair. Remember the trolls? And I would spin it, well, I'm going to spin it off the tip. And then I'm gonna take these, which are what's left, and transition it through. So I'm gonna put some on. You do not have to blend these. If you wanna just like pull them apart in the order that you want the transition to go, you can do that. And I, I probably would, but you asked specifically to see how to do this with hand cards. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, I grabbed it. See, I feel like this is enough. So because I already showed you how to do two, I am gonna leave it. See, see how blended that is? It's really nice. So again, I'm gonna, and actually this time I'm gonna do it like this. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Take it off and then roll it, okay? 
we're going to do a few of these and then I'll show you the tra the color transition that you get. It doesn't have to be dark to light. You can do it the opposite. You can really do like red to purple, anything, but you just pick out like the, the most red or the most purple or the darkest or the whatever. So this is my next one. And then with the next ones, those are the ones that I said was the lightest of that bunch. So what I'm going to do is I broke this into three pieces, remember? So what I want to do is take two of them and put one aside, okay? Then I'm going to grab one from the next bu bunch. I'm going to grab a bigger one. No, I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to break it into three, okay? So there's... And I'm going to put one with the two and then two with the one. So you end up with three pieces. This is really, okay, so I didn't break that, but I did it in like thirds. So I put two of them with one and that is part of the transition too. So the one that has two of the darker and one of the next batch, you blend that. That some of one color would mix with some of the next color and that helps you provide a transition and you can go as deep into this as you want like you can do 30 colors if you want to I just don't feel the need to okay so I'm gonna roll this one up this is gonna be a woolen prep and then this is the one that had two of the lighter, one of the darker. So this is your transition into that next color because the next color is that more purpley, lighter color. And it's okay, like on these where I have a smaller bundle, that's fine. Because the transitions are just gonna be the size they are. Don't sweat about that kind of stuff because it doesn't pay. It is what it is. Okay. All right, so nice, perfect. And now I'm gonna go to the next color, which is this, and I'm gonna take one out, the lightest one out again, which I think is this one, to set aside and split into three to do my next transition. So I'm gonna quickly do these. These are dark. So this doesn't really go to light from light to dark, but it kind of goes like from dark red to dark purple to lighter purple, and then it's gonna go through uh, the lighter red, through the oranges, etc. So this is my next color. Okay. Nice. All right, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this. I'm gonna split it into like one third, two thirds. The two thirds is going on. And the one third will go on with So I'm gonna back up, but I'm gonna first take you through these transitions. But then when I back up, you're gonna be able to see it much better. So I don't know why it's a big S, I guess just so I can get it all in one. Here, let me turn. So you can see that if I spin starting at either end, I will go gradually through all these color transitions and that's what I'm going to do. So let's go.
I thought I would quick show you. I was going through these spinning and looking at these next two up to go. This is next and then this one. And I felt like the change was a little more abrupt than I want it to be. I think you can probably see the colors are definitely, I don't know, more off than I want them to be is all I can say. So what I'm gonna do is make a transition for these two. No matter how hard you try to blend them, you will occasionally get a, an, a, a transition like this where you think, okay, um, that's too much. It's gonna be a stripe instead of a fade. <clears throat> these are roughly the same size. So I'm gonna take about a, a third of each, I guess. It's between a quarter and a third. That's closer to a third, I bet. And then we'll take about a third of this one. Pull them apart. And I'm gonna blend them as a transition, the same way I did all the other ones. Okay. We'll see how close it is and what we get blending one and if it's better between those two. Again, here's the two. You can see there's a change that might be a shift a little bit more abrupt than we might want. I'm gonna actually blend it one more time. It's hard for me to tell. And I don't want it to be too much of a stripey thing. Where it's just a very abrupt change between two colors. I think this is gonna be okay. So this really kind of purpley color happened because I had a color that breaks sometimes. It's called Cape Cod Cranberry. It breaks to a red and a blue because it's like a purpley red. Okay, I am much happier. So now you can see, I think, that that one created a transition. It's a little redder than this. It's a little purpler than this. So it'll create a more smooth transition. It happens sometimes. So each time you pull, out a couple to spin and you look at two next to each other and think that's an abrupt color change. You can just create another transition really quickly between the two. Okay, I've been running errands, excuse my everything, my Ness. And I have finished the singles. Let's focus on the important thing. I finished the singles, I got all four ounces on this bobbin, and um, I've been doing laundry and running errands. So again, I look crazy, but it's fine. I'm going to chain ply this, because if I chain ply it, it will preserve the color changes the way that I spun the singles. You guys have asked me before a few times, like over the past 18 months, uh, Anne did clear up for me why people keep asking me. People ask sometimes, do I rewind my bobbins before I ply? No, there's no way I would ever do that. <laughs> Visual aid. I get this question about chain plying all the time and people are like, explain it to me. By the way, I understand this question. I didn't understand it at the first when I first learned how to do this. My brain would be like, aren't you plying it all um, S and 
isn't one of those singles going the wrong way when you do that. It isn't, and the reason is because, hang on, let me draw you the picture. Pretend this is your single. Let's focus on this. I know it looks plied, but because I exaggerated the twist so that you would see how this works. Because I used to have this question too, and I did it in a Q&A, and if someone isn't watching the Q&As, they wouldn't know, or if they're just new. So you can see that in this case, it is going up towards the tiger picture that's up on the wall. So it's starting down low and going up towards the tiger picture. If you flip it upside down, the way that you are when you're chain plying, one piece of the chain gets flipped upside down, you end up with the exact same twist. So it starts down here and it goes up towards the tiger picture still. <laughs> I don't know why, but for the longest time my brain would not register that and it kept saying isn't one of my plies going backwards or is two of my plies going backwards what am i doing here and until i actually saw that in a picture i didn't i, I worried about it Okay, I'm done plying this. I did get it all on the bobbin, but it's on there pretty firmly. <laughs> so it's like tightly packed on there. I'm gonna wind it and count the yardage. Okay, so 532 yards. I'm gonna come in close so you can see the color shift. But first I gotta write myself a label with the yardage or I'll forget. I have showed these a million times, but I use those Tyvek bracelets. Like if you went to a water park and you bought 532, like a, an all day pass or something and they put those bracelets on you that are waterproof, that's what these are. But if you write on them with a ballpoint or a Sharpie, it does not wash off. So you can wash it with this, which I will do. It will stay legible. I mean, you won't even be able to tell. Let me come in close so you can see it better, the color, and then I will put the label on. There we go. Look at that. That gives you a fairly good idea of how the color shift works. You can kind of see it here too. Isn't that so cool? I do not know what I'll make with this, but I'm gonna start looking for something pretty soon. The funny thing is, I originally thought I would put this in my shop. I've been thinking about selling some of my hand spun that's just sitting on my shelf, um, I guess just languishing. And uh, while I was plying this, I was thinking I would sell it in my shop, but then like those little gremlins in your brain were like, it's not good enough to sell. So I don't know if I will or not. Sorry, still with the hair. If you are doing 
all your work with hand tools right now or it even if you are using dog brushes like it would take longer but you could do this that way so i hope this helps somebody i hope you try it because it is it's like more work kind of but at the same time watching the transformation of it is super fun i don't know maybe that's just me there's something about the magic of transforming your braid or even just your like dirty wool or whatever into really cool yarn that keeps me happy and coming back over and over again i'm gonna soak it and thwack it but i think we're pretty well where we need to be i hope you guys have a great week and i will see you soon thanks i love you bye